past. They don't want to lose that because in the past, they got the support, but they didn't have to do the production. They got the support, but they didn't have to do the man, the man things, the masculine energy things. They got all those things and they got it all for free. So now they're looking at other women like, hey, we want you to support us. Because if they didn't, why would they care about what we have going on over here? They care. Because men understand that the power of a woman is to make a man or unmake him. And a woman can unmake him by bruising the ego or putting him down, but with her words and her actions. And men take that too hard because they don't want to ever think that they're lacking from women. That's the one place they don't want to ever feel like they're lacking or that they're not enough. Now, it's one thing to go out here with their boys and know that the, the, boy, the men that they hang with are better than them. But they don't want to be around women and feel that they are not enough. So a woman, that's in a woman's power. So a woman can make a decision at any moment, any time. Like the men that she are, she's with, she can either make him or break him. She can make him or break him. And the, the, the energy that they get from you, when you decide, if you decide to make a man, this is the energy they can use as stepping stones to become an wealthy and have resources. If you were to look at most of the men's history who actually were able to make that happen for themselves, go and ask them what woman was, was helping them, what woman was supporting them. And I guarantee you, they're going to give them they're going to give you some woman. It may have been their mother. It may have been a girlfriend. It may have been an ex-wife. But it was a woman in that corner because women actually absolutely thrive on a woman's support. They thrive on a woman's uh, ability to speak life intent to them. And if they ha usually that is the woman that helped them to get to that next level. And what they're trying to do is get it from strangers because they don't have it in their real life now. And that's part of our woman's power, understanding that we are so powerful beings that we can make or break a man. You can choose to support him or you can bruise his ego. You can choose to be there for him and respect his opinions and ideas and, and actions, or you can choose to dress him down. But whichever one you desi desire to do, uh, Men are absolutely waiting in line to experience it. Even the ones that hate women. Why are they in women's spaces all the time? They ain't women's spaces because they're trying to either get made or, or they're trying to get made. They want a man, woman to make them because they know that's the power of a woman. They know just getting that approval from a woman is powerful. Just getting her support is powerful. Just getting... Uh, a woman to actually use her words in the way that is a blessing can help them use that energy to actually get to new resources. And a, a man that finds a woman that can make them and pour into them and support them, he is a blessed man for sure. And men understand these concepts, even though women have lost these concepts because we we have generations and generations of women who gave their powers away. Y'all, a, a man cannot take your power. You have to give it away. You have to willingly give your power away for it to be taken. You have to willingly isolate yourself and put yourself in position for your power to be taken. This is not something a man can take. A man can never take your power, but you can willingly give it. You can decide, I'm going to be in a space where I give all of my support but I get none of the appreciation, none of the quality of life, none of the love, none of the care, none of the, uh, none of the receiving. I get nothing from this and you pour all of it into him. And in turn, when there's nothing given back to us, we start to break down. We have to be receiving. We have to be in that feminine energy to receive. It's absolutely necessary because if we keep giving, women were not meant to constantly overgive. They weren't meant to constantly give and give and give and give and never receive anything back. This breaks us down. Our spirit, our psyche, it breaks down the, the, the spiritual part of us that's unseen. Because, we, like I said, I could talk about women's power forever and ever and ever. Because there's so many aspects that I'm not even hitting today. Because there's another part of a woman's power is like intuition. Intuition is a woman's power. Men want, that's another reason why they want to be around women. 
Because think about being around a woman who's able to tap into the unseen. Think about being able to be around a woman who can see before the danger, who can has who has a, a sixth sense that she can pick up on uh, bad vibes and bad energy. Think about being around that woman. And men understand that with women, that comes with them. So that's another power that they want to tap into. Because yes, they do have it to a certain degree. But ours is a whole lot more stronger because we were made to be able to tap into the unseen. We were made to have that spiritual side of us to be active. Where men, they have it too. But at childhood, they weren't encouraged to use it as much. We were encouraged to be sensitive, to uh, read between the lines, to, uh, you know, treat people well or, you know, kind of know what someone wants before they even speak it. And that's the reason why a lot of us have to fight past that thinking, because some of us have been put in that place so many times that we have been taught that we should know. Like we've been taught we should know. And I'm going to tell you, yes, you might know. Yes, your intuition may tell you. Yes, you, you have a gut feeling. But with men, let them tell you. Let them tell you. Don't pretend or act like you know what a man wants for you. Let him tell you what he wants for you. So you can make sure that you're on the right page. But that is one of the reasons why men are trying to be around women. They say they don't want to be around because they do want to be around. They, they're looking for some supportive women and they have found them. They're on social, they're on social, they're on social media too, just like them on social media. They're on social media, you know, giving their support to or making men that they, they don't even know. And that's why you got to be careful with that too. Don't make men that haven't invested. Don't make men that haven't invested in you, that you have no connection with, that haven't proven themselves to you. Because when you do that, you diminish your own energy. You know, while you were sitting here giving all your all to that man that is not yours, that man that is not your husband, you could have been using your own energy, your own life force, your own creative energy to create something for yourself. You could be pouring into your own life and making your life becomes better. You could be pouring into your own finances to make your own finances better. You could be making your own position solid. So you have to be careful of where your energy goes. Okay? But a woman's power is so multifaceted. Like I said, I could go on and on and on about a woman's power. And how women need to recognize and understand what that power is. So that you don't... Take and pour that power into the wrong man, the wrong big friends, the wrong uh, people. Because when you do so, um, I don't believe in having regret, but I know it diminishes women when we go in and give all our support, appreciation, uh, communication, love, nurturing. Uh, we give all of that to the wrong person and it diminishes us and it absolutely takes away from what we could be doing for ourselves. But get, make sure that you let that idea go. Because I think I come across maybe lots of women that really do look in from the perspective of men being your own powerful being, not recognizing your own power, not realizing your woman's power. You have power in itself. This is the reason why men are attracted to you, why they want to be around you, why they want something from you. Because they understand what they're getting from you. You just don't understand what it is. You haven't tapped into your own woman's power. And you don't know how to harness it for yourself. Now, until you have someone worthy of you, you should never be giving your power away to a man. You should be investing and letting your power be for you. You should be using your power to create for you. You should be using your power to manifest the life that you desire and not to give it away to a man. There's too many women or too many stories I've come across on this app 
where women have given five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and they've given it all to a man. And not only does it show in their physical, it shows in their energy. Like when you look in the eyes, you notice that the windows to the eyes, it's the, the windows of the soul, the, the, what is it they say about the soul to the eyes and stuff like that. But when you look into a woman's eyes, you kind of can tell what's going on behind the closed doors. You kind of tell where she is energetically. And a lot of those women, they look as though they're dead behind the eyes. And that's because they use so much of their own power to pour into him and to support him and to appreciate him. And he gave her the middle finger. The eyes are the windows to the soul. Thank you. The eyes to the window are the windows to the soul. And this reason I say when y'all are on this, this app and y'all are looking at women and y'all are seeing where women are, look in the eyes. The eyes tell a story. You can see energetically behind the eyes if that woman is happy, if that woman is content, or you can tell behind the eyes if that woman is diminished, if she's just dead inside. You can tell. It's all over her. And until there's a man that's worthy of you, that recognizes your power, and he doesn't want to diminish it, he doesn't want to uh, control it, he doesn't want to uh, stomp it out, then don't be with those type of men. Make sure you, you take the time and use your own creative force, your own creative energy, and invest in pour into yourself. And it manifests the life that you want. And harness your women's power for yourself until you have a man that's worthy. Until a man comes along and he wants to, wants you to, uh, he wants to amplify what you already are. Until he brings value to your life. Until he brings joy to your life. Not happiness, joy. Until he brings joy to your life. Until he makes you uh, feel like you're a superwoman. Then that is the man that you can actually pour your woman's power into. Stop pouring your, your woman's power into a deadbeat, into a bum, into a man who is only going to utilize that power for himself. Because men understand this. They have an understanding of what women bring and how women amplify their own power and how they can take your power that you have for yourself, that is supposed to be for you until you have a man that's worthy. They can take your power and they can utilize it to create more resources for themselves. They've been doing it since the beginning of time. Um, women have only increased and became more multifaceted in their woman's power so that they can utilize it for themselves. Just, do y'all realize just having a beautiful woman on his arm helps you know to bring in more resources because it brings in more people it brings in more men of status men look at other men who are looking at who have a beautiful woman on their arm and they actually want to do business with them there i literally posted on instagram where a man said that he looked at his the wife of the uh the man that he was willing to do a business deal with he looked at the wife and from that wife and her looks and what she brought to the table he made a decision if he was going to bring him to the table so this is something that men understand. So you have to understand your own woman's power. And you have to understand not to allow it to be given to a man who's unworthy. And stop thinking that men, masculine power is bigger and better and more important than feminine power. Because it isn't. And neither one is bigger than the other. We both have our own power. Okay? We both have our own power. I know the title said going live on to YouTube, but we're really just talking about a woman's power and how to harness it. Okay. Uh, in order to harness your power, your individual power, you first have to step into womanhood. You must, you must step into yourself. You must step into your receiving. You must step into your synergy. You have to step into your relationships, uh, your relate, the power of relationships, your power of uh, collaboration, your power of emotional expression. Your power of communication. You have to step into yourself in order to weld your woman's power. You can't weld something until you get comfortable within it. If you're not comfortable being a woman in a womanhood and in your woman power, you can't weld something that you're not comfortable having. So, and stepping into your womanhood is an individual journey. It is not all similar. Everyone's journey is going to look different. Mine may look like a heel. Yours may look like a mohill. 
Yours or mine may be uh, curvy and windy and yours may be a straight line. But you have to step in your power. So you have to let go of this sense of that men make all the decisions. Men are that men that are men understand that women are very powerful beings. Why do you all think they're always trying to figure out how to put us in a box or how to isolate us or how to mute our voices? They're trying to do that because they understand not only are we the portal to bring life, we are also the, the portal to the unseen. We're the portal to uh, the resources and we're the portal to uh, life with the portal and they understand that women are that portal and instead of actually letting that portal be letting that woman be in her womanhood and grow and evolve they want to control it these are men who are not quite right here they're somewhat damaged they want to control that portal they want to have control who have access to it they want to control how it's open they want to control who gets uh to be a part of it like these are the men who are unhinged and you all see examples of these men on social media all the time. They're trying to figure out how to control uh, the one of the most powerful uh, beings is women. Because if they control women, think about how many things. If a man control a woman, men and they've done that before in the past. When they control women, they had control over production. They had control over marriage. They had control over sex. They had control over spirituality because a woman could not even decide what religion she wanted to be a part of. If she was born into that, that's where she died into it. And now that uh, women have done their due diligence and then they needed to do in order to fight and come up out of that and, you know, take control of their own woman's power. Now that uh, we still have some women that's in the shackles. We still have someone who don't understand uh, the power of one man. The, the powerful being that they are, why do you think there's so many people trying to figure out how to control you, how to put you in a box, how to mute your voice? Because you're going to try to do that when you don't know or when they say um, when that, that being is so powerful and not only is the intelligent, not is it only is it intuitive, not only is it spiritual, not only is it intelligent. They're going to try to figure out how to take control of it or how to stomp it out or how to make it do what they want it to do. But women have to understand their power so that they don't fall for that trap. Because I think there's too many of them who want to figure out how to just harness uh, women, women's power instead of actually work with it, instead of be a part of it. And that's because that we've had, we have a history of not being able to make those decisions by ourselves. And some of them are still of the same mind that, that we can't make a decision, that we are not of our own mind. This is so true. A, a wife is a reflection of a man's manliness, ability to provide and produce. Absolutely. Like I said, there's so many aspects of woman's power that I can go into. Like I said, I can literally do a series. I can talk every single day about something different in women's power that women need to focus in on. And the more powerful that you understand yourself to be, the more you'll be able to move into the realms of worthy men. You can't move into worthy men when you are consistently thinking that it's only a, a man makes so many decisions. Y'all are giving men more power than they actually have. A woman has power too. We have to learn how to step into it. We have to learn how to, to uh, utilize it, to weld it in order to get the things that we want out of, our, out of our lives. But you have to make sure that you're not giving it to unworthy people. You have to recognize the unworthy. Recognize the unworthy before they even show themselves. That's what your intuition is there for. That's the reason why God gave you that gift of intuition. He gave you that gift not just for you to be able to identify when a man is cheating on you he gave you that gift so that you can see the unseen so that you can be a part of the unseen he gave you that gift so that you can tap in and know when you need to go left or right but so many of y'all can recognize when a man cheating on you but you don't recognize when you need to actually go this direction in order to get this education or this direction in order to start this business or this direction in order to be friends or part of it or part of this community that's what your intuition is meant to be for it is is a guiding system it's a god's gift it was god's given and that's another reason why men are like, oh, if I can get this woman on my side, 
she had she has tapped in. Like just imagine being that man who who has a woman on his side who understands her woman's power that she can make or break a man that she can she's intuitive that she's intelligent that she's wise that she knows how to use her words she can either bless or curse him that is some woman and men understand that these are the things that they're seeking out and the unhealthy men these are the things they're seeking to destroy, to destroy. so this year's gonna say don't pour into every man make sure this man has proven himself and he comes correct a man that proves himself and comes correct doesn't mind doing those things because they understand that oh to find a woman that understands a woman's power is rare especially in the world that we live in because this knowledge is i feel like the knowledge is dying about women's power i feel like there's too many women who have uh they've been a part of the system for so long and the only thing that they know is let's figure out how to do something so that we can be accepted to men so i feel like that knowledge is dying and only knowledge that we've been left with is some women like myself who understand a woman's power who learn from her grandmother who learned her her grandma my grandmother learned from her mother and her mother learned from her mother and that is the way it is supposed to be passed down that knowledge of women's power and your power how your power is supposed to utilize and how you're supposed to evolve and grow in your power and how you're supposed to step into it. That is something that's supposed to be passed down through the women in your family. But guess what? If you don't have healthy women in healthy environments or you have broken women, this stops that cycle. This stops the information. And then with the information, can with no information, control can begin. The, the less information that you have, the less knowing that you have of your own woman's power, the more you can be controlled. The more that you will be isolated from the truth and the more that you can be controlled and told what to do. So now you don't do anything but do what you're told. And if you're doing what you're told, why would you ever fall? Why would you ever follow what God has given you? Because you only know what you've been told. You never taught to, to dig deep. You never taught to pray. You never taught to meditate. You never been taught to dig and look inside. You never taught to be looking the unseen. You won't talk that. So when you won't talk that, it's harder to connect with that and have an understanding of that intuition. That's the reason why I feel like uh, the intuition that God has given us, we, we're misusing it. The only thing we're able to see it or use it for is for something bad. Like most times people can only say, I only got an intuitive nudge when I was walking down a dark alley. Baby, you probably was getting an intuitive nudge because you're in a dark alley. Okay. You should be getting that intuitive nudge at epiphany. You should be getting that knowing. You should be getting that download and you should just be being. You could literally be in, I could be in a grocery store. And immediately just something hit me. I'm not even like, oh my gosh, I got to go and talk about this. Oh my gosh, this is what the next topic is going to be about. Correct, 100? Yes, I went to a date and for the time of my life, I set my power. I was just pleasant, happy, not proving myself. The man paid the bill without a blink and he's eager to see me again. Yes, absolutely. And I love that for you. I love that for you because you're going to be so much happier operating your woman's power versus being uh, controlled. And not the control we're talking about where men can't tell you anything or let you know anything. I'm talking about the control where you don't, you don't even have that connection with women, with being a woman. That You don't even have that knowing of what it means to be a woman and what that entails. And that's the reason why I'm talking about a woman's power, like I said, I can go on and on and on. Because there's so many aspects to a woman's power and it's multifaceted. I have said to myself that he's benefiting from this because he gets to be seen with a beautiful woman. So I never feel as if I owe him anything. Absolutely. Men benefit from being with a beautiful woman. They benefit from being with a supportive woman, a woman who knows how to use her words. I can use my words to make you feel like a hero. 
I can use my words to make you feel like that you walk on water. I can use my words to make you feel like you're the best man ever. Or I can use my words and make you feel like dirt. Or I can make I can use my words to make you feel as though you're never going to make it. Or I can make use my words to make you feel like you should not be a part of this world. See, women have that beautiful ability to communicate. Words are one of our power. It's a one of, it's an aspect of our women's power. We can use our words to bless or curse. And see, men want us just to bless. They want us to say whatever they want them to want us to say. They want to have control over our words because those hit like arrows. When he's with a woman and his woman does nothing but degrade him, emasculate him, and put him down. Do you all know it takes a long time for a man to get over that? Because those words hit home. Because women have that power of words. Words are could be a blessing or a curse. And men understand that if they can get all women speaking highly of them, saying nothing but good things, it will help them and pour into their resources and just pour into their self-confidence so they'll feel like they can do things and do it again another day. Knowing your true power is real, is so relaxing. It is. I think knowing your true power is not only relaxing, it's comforting. Is it's there's a when you know your true power, the things of this world do not hurt as much because you have a true understanding of who you are and where you're going. You have an understanding of who's supposed to be in your life and who isn't. You have an understanding of the red flags and the ones that aren't. Like knowing your power and stepping into it. And accepting it and trusting it and being able to weld it correctly, it puts you on a whole nother level of womanhood. And I'm going to tell you this and be honest with you because y'all know I'm very honest when it comes to these things because I, I take this seriously. Women who have that true understanding of their woman's power and they step into it, they are, they are rare. They are rare. And, and what, what happens when something is rare? When something is rare, it is salt. When something is rare and valuable, it is solid. All everyone is looking for it, men and women. Why? Because it's rare. It's valuable. And since it's rare that women step into their true woman's power and understand it and then weld it, you will be sought out by men and women. Because they'll see that you know something that they know, don't know and they will want to know it. And they want to be around it. They may not even have a true understanding of what it is. They may not get they may not even they may not kind of even uh, quantify it. They may can't even communicate it because it's rare and valuable. Most women are too confused, confused by what society tells us, confused by what women tell you that you get distracted by that and you give your woman's power to someone else. Remember what I said before that you cannot no one can take your power away from you. You have to willingly give it away. You have to willingly isolate yourself. You have to willingly stop yourself from going after the desires of your heart. You have to willingly stop yourself. You have to give it away. You have to say, hey, here it is. And some men want you to do that. Because if you do that and you give your power away willingly, then they have control. You have to realize sometimes some people are unhealthy. And they can't deal with what a woman's power truly is and the truth in it. And instead of trying to understand it, instead of trying to get to know it, they try to control it and isolate it and stomp it out. But once you know what your power is, no one can take that away from you. It's just like, it's just like education. Once you wield it, once you hold it, once you know it, no one can take it away from you. It can only grow from there. How do we use our power when dealing with a dis disrespectful man. See, a woman in her power would look at a disrespectful man as though he is beneath her. He is beneath me. He's beneath giving him any of my energy or my attention. Because usually, y'all realize that when people disrespect you or they say something to get attention, that's what it is. It's attention. He wants your attention. He knows that if he can get you in your feelings, he can get you all caught up in your feels and how you're feeling about a certain thing, he can get attention from you. And even attention is powerful from a man. If he can be like, hey, he go back to his boy and say, hey, guess what? Uh, I got some attention from her. 
he gets big ups from getting attention from you. And you just helped him move up the needle just a little bit. You just gave your power just a little bit. So giving a, a disrespectful man, only reason he's doing what he's doing because he wants attention. And since if you decide to give it to him, you are playing into giving him that attention, which also giving your power away. Disrespectful men don't deserve my attention. Do you know how you're holding your power and not give it away and make sure you're not giving it away to unworthy men? Walk away. Walk away. Y'all don't have to engage with men who are disrespectful. You don't have to engage with men to, to call you, that call you out your name. You have to learn to walk away and not give a man attention. Because when you give attention to him, you're giving your power away. And any little bit of power that you give to a man that's unworthy, you're helping that man grow. You're helping that man utilize the energy that you give him in order to be better. Because that's going to be a story that he can go tell other men. That's going to be a story that he can go and tell other men that, that makes him seem like he's better than he is. And since other men will begin to respect him because they think he's better than what he is, it may help open up doors for him. So y'all have to be very careful about giving me any of your woman's power. When you utilize it and you weld it and you understand it, you don't give it easily. You only give it to worthy men, men who are proving themselves worthy of your uh, woman's power. Because when a man's proving himself of your worthy, uh, woman's power, this means he's coming equally with his own masculine power. He has to come with his own masculine power. When he comes with his power, you come with his power, you all are a uh, force to be reckoned with. But learn to walk away. Like, he disrespectful, he doesn't want attention. He's just projecting. It's not about you. Don't get triggered about what he's saying. He just want to take what you give him and probably twist it into a story in his own head, which is going to give him energy in order for him to go out here and do better in life. He can go in and, and use the disrespect that you think you're giving back to him and he can twist it to say you want him. Or you, he can twist it and make it seem something that it isn't. So give him nothing. Pay him dust. And paying him dust he will always be like, oh, I don't know why she didn't give me anything. I don't know why I didn't ruffle her feathers. Because you're very uh, aware of not giving your woman's power out to any and everybody. You're only giving your woman's power to those who are worthy. And that goes for men or women. That goes for men or women. Don't pay him dust. Everything that you are is power. You are power, but you have to know how to utilize it, weld it, and how to accept it. You have to let go of what you think the world is about and have a true understanding of what it is, what it is in its entirety. You have to understand your own power. And don't allow people, society, men or women, to make you think that you are less than than what you are. Because the more that you buy into that, the more controlled that you would be. And one of the, the another aspect of a woman's power is freedom. Freedom to be. And having that freedom to be, we become more powerful energetically, spiritually, intellectually, when we are able to be. Having freedom and not being controlled and being able to grow and evolve, this is another aspect of woman's power that helps us to really weld that power in its entirety. But too many times we're seeking out situations that lack freedom. How to use a woman's power to overcome procrastination? I feel like the answers relate to proper self-care. Procrastination, okay? If you want to utilize a uh, woman's power, give it back to yourself. And what I mean by that, you know the words that you give to people when you want to get, you care about them and you want them to, to, to perk up and you want them to be happy and you want to pour into them, give those words back to yourself. Just like you have the ability to bless or curse others in that power, you have the ability to bless or curse yourself. Give those affirmations to yourself daily. And then in giving those affirmations to yourself, just do it. 
Get up and put one foot in front of the other and just do the thing. Don't think about the thing. Pour into yourself all of the good and positive things that you would give to others because I know you are because that's what we do as women. We tend to pour into other people and make pe other people feel good about themselves and we prop other people up. We make people other people better. But I want you to give all that that you gave to others and I want you to take it all back and I want you to give it to yourself. And then I want you to put one foot in front of the other and I don't want you to overthink this. See, procrastination is a thinking thing. If you stop getting in your head and start getting in your body, your feet will start to move and you will start to do. So whatever it is that you're trying to attempt, you no longer overthink it at this moment. You're going to give yourself everything that you give everybody else. Y'all know how you say you want to snatch everything you gave everybody, all of the power, all of the energy, all of the time that you gave everybody else. I want you to snatch it back from everybody else and give it to yourself. And then once you give it to yourself, it's, it's energetic to take all that back from other people. Especially when you gave it to unworthy people in the first place. So you take all that back, give it to yourself, and you will find that you have energy to do more. And then doing more, I want you to put one foot in front of the other. Instead of getting in your head, I want you to get in your body. And getting in your body, I want your feet to move. And I want you to go ahead and accomplish the goal that you are trying to accomplish. No more sitting in a corner thinking about it. No more sitting in the corner dreaming about it. Go out here, put one foot in front of the other, get in your body, and get to doing it. People are looking for attention. If they can't it in a positive way, they'll try to get in a negative way. For example, disrespect. If we react, they win because they get what they were looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, the way the world works, any bit of intention can be used as a resource. Attention is a resource. Attention is an energetic thing that we can give to another person. And when they get that, they can spin that and they can use that and they can give it to themselves. And then since just because your, your intention, when you sent that attention towards that way was negative, you can use a negative thing and a positive thing to remake yourself. You can use it. Y'all heard that saying about, hey, it doesn't matter about uh, negative things in the news. It's still going to do what it needs to do. It's the same thing when it comes to energies. Negative energy and positive energy both going to do the same thing. You can take someone's rejection of you and you can build a staircase, a house. You can build a new reality. Anything negative or positive, you can take that and create your entire world. So it doesn't matter how, what the intention was behind it. If you give attention, they can take that attention, whether it's a negative or positive, and they can take that and build their life off of it. Because it's all about the stories that you tell yourself. He can tell himself, oh, she wanted me. That's why she gave me the attention. That's why she gave me the attitude. She attracted to me. Some men think that you're attracted to them just because you are nagging or not and nasty to them. Like, it's all about the stories you tell yourself when the energy is coming towards you. You can utilize it. The best option is to ignore and walk away. So they stay with the frustration of having that need that is not met. Absolutely. This means you're not giving your energy to an unworthy person. And that, that's what is that's what's truly going on, on social media. That's why I don't engage. Like some people are always like, hey bro, why you don't engage with what you see online with men talking badly about women? I don't engage. The more that we give them attention, it doesn't matter if it's negative. It doesn't matter if it's positive. They can take that and rework it because it's based off the stories that they tell themselves. And all it would do is create more of them. Now, if we would have done what I said in the very beginning, when KS was on the scene, when he came up on the scene, what did I tell y'all to do? I said, I like he ain't there. And we could, we could have burnt his to the ground. But of course, there's so many women who are not in touch with womanhood and uh, the, the energy of it, they don't, they're not in touch with the intentions of it. They don't understand it and they don't know how to yield it. So they didn't understand that the best thing would have been our silence. Not addressing them. That's the reason why y'all don't see me addressing them. Why would I? Why would I? I want to give my attention to worthy men and women. I want to give my energy to worthy men and women. I want to give you that energy so you can build upon it and create your reality from it. But I'm also very intentional who I give that to. Women have, have the power. They still collectively have the power 
But a lot of times the information, the information about womanhood is not there. Because then there wouldn't have been. And see, he was the person to stop from that stuff too. Y'all, if y'all would have did what I gave two years ago when he first started, and was it three before he died? If y'all would have been quiet when during that whole time, you wouldn't have spawned more of them. Now, look at this. All the energy that was given to him, not only did he die and give that energy over to the rest of them and spawn more of them, that of his likeness and his ideals out here. And all of his ideas weren't bad, though. I ain't going to condemn and say all his ideas are bad because it's not true. But all some of it was destructive. It wasn't going to help do anything for any community. But a woman's power, you are powerful. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. You have the ability to unmake or make men or unmake and make a person overall. And it's not just with men. You have the ability to uh, make when you have children you have the ability to make them or break them you have the ability to have children that will not have to heal uh, have to go to therapy to heal or you have the ability to create healthy uh, children overall you have the ability to support and have a healthy family you have the ability to make or break or support you have that ability because it's all multi uh, aspects it's aspects of a woman's power a woman's um, power is there is no limits. Like I said, I could do tons and tons of videos on a woman's power. Because it's multifaceted. I, I believe I could probably do one on just one aspect at a time of women's power. And that would probably take about 10, 15 videos in itself. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and open up. Y'all have any uh, questions you want to ask? Because I'm getting ready to go. Because I do have a, a meeting. That's something I'm going to go. I'm going to go out today. But let's go ahead and do Q and A. Any uh, Q and A you want? You have a question? Go ahead. Let's drop it. Uh, let's try to stay on topic. If you have a question about women's power and how to utilize it, how to weld it, how to embrace it. Because I think the, the scariest thing about embracing a woman's power is embracing yourself. Is realizing who you are and in acceptance of who you are. And accepting the good and the bad. There is no such thing as only accepting half of yourself, just the good parts that you like. You have to accept yourself in its entirety in order to step into your woman's power. So you embrace it by basically doing the work. That's how you embrace it. And that's the reason why I say a woman who really truly steps into a woman's power is rare. Because not only can she not be controlled, she's on a whole nother level because she has an understanding of the dynamics of men and women and the energy and the spiritual and intellectual, the whole aspects of womanhood. What is a dark femininity? Is it something bad? In my personal opinion, it isn't because I'm gonna come it from a um, I'm gonna come of it come about it by Dr. Carl Jung. Dr. Carl Jung talked about the light and the dark femininity, and he talked about dark femininity as though it's being about the parts of ourselves that we do not accept. That's all the dark femininity is. It is nothing evil. Um, I think with the way some parts of the uh, femininity content creators or that particular group they have people who have actually created a whole dynamic they have made it to look evil and to sound e evil but it isn't evil because dark femininity is a part of yourself you, you have not accepted like some of us have not accepted that we are uh we want to be argumentative or or we we like we like being in a space that's toxic and that's the dark femininity. Dark femininity is about being accepting those things that is not acceptable to society. But once you accept it, then it no longer is dark. It's just a part of the feminine energy. It just, you just, there is to me, I don't like the uh, light and dark aspects of it because we just want to call it femininity. We don't want to separate the two because the whole, be, the whole idea of teaching dark and, and light is for you to actually integrate those two so you can be be one. 
And then that's your femininity. But I don't think um, dark femininity is bad. Um, I think dark femininity is just accepting those things that we have not accepted. or And that's the reason why we have so many people who, talk, who teach it and they make it bad. Like, well, I, I, you know, I don't even like using bad or good. Because there's no one that's instinctually 100% good or 100% bad. So I don't really necessarily like using good or bad. Um, because all of us have a little bad in us. All of us have a little good in us. And that's just being honest. How to deal with unhealthy man? Don't. Now just being honest. Save yourself. If he's an unhealthy man, uh, if he's an unhealthy man, I would say save yourself. Like, don't put yourself through that trauma. Don't put yourself through that situation. Get out. Uh, I'm going to say not to deal with them. Like, we have to, uh, then I have to ask the question of what do you consider unhealthy? Because the things, everybody has a different idea of what unhealthy is. Like, what is unhealthy to you? And is it something that you cannot live with? If you cannot live with it, save yourself. Like, that's what it is. If you cannot, because there's not going to be anybody perfect. Like, I have flaws. You have flaws. We all have flaws. So, you have to get with someone who is, you feel that is worthy and that you can deal with the flaws that they have. Where they're at with them now. Not where you want to correct them or you want to fix them. No. Look at for what it is now. If you can deal with what he has going on now and you feel like he's worthy, then you can pour your women's power into him. Tips on bringing a man to a family event. Um, um, do they like you? I mean, what's going on? Is this the first time, second time, third time? Or is this the first time he's ever been to an event? Um, I actually wouldn't bring, I mean, you know how to do what I'm saying on this one. I didn't bring my husband to a family event until I knew it was serious. If it's serious, then yes. And then if it's if you want to invite him to a family event, just invite him. Just invite him. There's no rules to it. Just keep uh, your eyes open and your ears open. So you can see how they interact and you can hear what he says and how he communicates in, uh, in you know, when y'all are at that event. Just invite him. You said that men know our power and what we can actually bring. So why do you think men are asking women what they bring to the table? Um, if you wanted to control or force or get something that you don't for free, how would you go about doing it? Wouldn't you go about trying to manipulate a person in order to prove themselves? Or wouldn't you go about trying to uh, break that person down so they feel like they're less than? That is why men ask you, what do you bring to the table? And I've heard so many different uh, content creators who uh, say, hey, you should answer that question. I'm going to say this. He's not being genuine because what do you bring to the table is a disingenuous, disingenuous question. Why is that? Because you find out what people bring to the table over time. You do not try to find out at that one date, that one sit down. If you're trying to do that, a lot of times it's because they don't trust themselves or they've been hurt so much. They're scared of moving forward or having a relationship in the first place. So that's the reason why they do it. It's disingenuous, a disingenuous question. It's not genuine because um, you're going to find out what someone brings to a relationship by, by dating and then going to courting. You're going to find over time. That's not something you can find out in one sitting anyway. And anyone who's pushing that question, a lot of times there's something going on with them. They don't trust themselves to, uh, they don't trust themselves with that relationship. And like I said, if you want to manipulate someone, why not try to figure out how to get them to prove themselves? And you do, they do the whole work. They do the, all the work. And they, especially if he doesn't have that masculine instinct where he has enough discernment to, to know if he's dealing with a genuine woman. How to be in your dark femininity so it's not becoming detrimental or destructive. I had a friend where it went soft because she started out caring at all anymore about anyone, one other than herself. Uh, that's because of the fact that you have to accept the entire 
uh, dynamic. You have to accept the light as well as the dark. In order to not go one way or the other, you have to be accepting in your, yourself in its entirety. This means you have to accept uh, the parts of yourself that you love, the parts of yourself you do not like. When you accept all of it in its entirety and you step into your true femininity, then you don't go one way or the other. You're pretty much a balanced individual. The reason why is going south for her because she's not balanced. She sounds like she snuffed out all the light, all of the good things about herself to step into the dark femininity. I don't want to become like her, but I want to make progress. The answer to uh, the light and dark is self-mastery. That's what the answer is. When you accept who you are and accept the things that people don't like about you, you become other, you become powerful. And this keeps you where you are. Uh, I hate the word balance. I don't even think it's the right word, but this keeps you where you're not going one way or the other. You can see uh, things clearly. Hi. Let me see. I don't know why I keep doing that. Lavishly Leah, hi. He said he's serious. He's a family friend already. Just us showing up together is new for me. Him and my family keep talking about telling my cousin who's his, who his friends about us. Okay. I am working to be more comfortable with being a woman around my family. I'm 26 and never had a man come with me to events. Okay. Well, you you got this. There's nothing else you need to do but other than uh, step into it. Uh, make the decision and do it. Make the decision and do it. And just go ahead and take him to that event. It sounds like you are uh, you're sure about him coming and y'all are moving forward. Then go. Go ahead and do it. Go, go with him to the event and just keep your eyes and ears open. All right, so if I don't see any other questions, I'm going to close out because I think we already been here over an hour. Yeah, and I, you know what, uh, basically going back to the young lady's uh, question, we talked about dark femininity, and I think that when we have too many people teaching dark femininity and they don't have a real true understanding of what it is, I think it could be detrimental to the young uh, women. Now you have young women who they're stumping out the light that that part of themselves that they loved before in order to go dark to, and I hate to say go dark, let's not say go dark, to, to create boundaries and standards and to uh, carry themselves in a specific way. Now that they have chosen that, they feel like they have to stomp out uh, any happiness or light or fun. And that is not true. That is not the truth of femininity in the first place. Femininity is somewhat, you can equate femininity to self-mastery. If you take and accept all of you, you won't go one way or the other. Hey, bro, I told him to marry me, but he's still not initiating the process. Um, you can't tell a man to marry you. That sounds like a demand. Men don't do anything in demand. They do. When it comes to marriage, a woman has to be logical and a man has to be emotional. And he has to want to lock you down. He has to see no one else above or beyond you to want to marry you. So you don't demand anything. You let a man marry you. It has to be his decision. How do you use feminine energy and power for discipline? Feminine energy, and like I said before, with, with feminine energy, you can equate self-mastery. When you step into your feminine energy, you're stepping into a woman who can receive, a woman who's intuitive, a woman who knows how to collaborate, a woman who knows how to communicate. So in order to do that, you have to master self. And mastering self will make you more disciplined. Stepping into... Who you truly are will make you more disciplined. Y'all know when it comes to discipline, it is 
just a series of events where you're doing it over and over and over again. You don't get discipline without doing, which means you have to step forward first. So if you want to combine uh, mastering self and, and getting to know it with discipline, you could do that just by working on self. Doing the inner work can create discipline because it takes, you have to make a decision to do the inner work to become better. You have to make a decision to dig into self and work on yourself and to become better. And this becomes more disciplined. And see, once you become disciplined in one area, you can copy and paste. And you just continue to move forward. And you can go from, hey, I'm going to be disciplined in my feminine energy and my inner work. To, hey, I'm going to be disciplined in my exercise. Or, hey, I'm going to be disciplined in my business. Hey, I'm going to be disciplined in my goals. I'm going to be disciplined in the things I need to do. Once you start that entire process, discipline is like a snowball effect. But you have to actually make a decision. And start somewhere. So start somewhere. Like if you want to combine uh, feminine energy and the power of discipline, get discipline and your inner work. And you will find that it is a snowball effect where you are able to be disciplined in other areas of your life. So did I get it right that a dark feminine energy that should not get destructed is about finding out what is good and bad about me and embracing both unapologetically? I don't know if I got it right. You got it right. That is how you do not go one way or the other. When you are in acceptance of your true self, you cannot go good or bad. Even though I don't like using those words because there's nothing essentially good or bad. Like who really truly determines what's good or bad? But acceptance will keep you from going too far right, too far left. He's going through a lot, and I told him to come back when he gets his life together. I blocked him. He hasn't called me private like he does. Thank you. You're welcome. He's going through a lot, and I told him to come back when he gets his life together. Okay. Okay. Nothing wrong with letting him go. He's not the right one. Walking away is a power too. Learn how to walk away when it needs to happen. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with walking away. I just don't want anyone putting out there saying, marry me or else. Like, be careful with that. Never give him a man an ultimatum. You want a man to choose uh, you in marriage, you want him to choose you in all things. In order, he has to make that decision. Even when it comes to relationship, he has to make a decision that he's going to choose to be in a relationship with you. You just have to learn not to give poor your woman's power into a man that is not chosen you. What is that will keep me from going too far bad or too far nice? I didn't get it costly. Um, Self-mastery. Self-mastery will, will get you. Let me explain something to y'all. The reason why so many women are so on this dark feminine, I am the boss, I, I create these boundaries and I have these rules and he has to do this and he has to do that because they're scared of actually being nice or kind to someone and being walked on. When you fear something, it controls you more than anything else. Fear is a powerful thing. So if only thing the, the only thing you're doing is to try to make sure that you don't ever get hurt, that no one ever does you wrong, that your feelings don't never get hurt, and you operate in fear, you are you're more controlled than anybody else. So that's the reason why they're all like, I'm a bad this, I'm a bad that, and I make him do this, and they're doing they're posting all these things, horrible things uh, that they do to men, and they're celebrating about it. They don't understand that's not healing, that's rage. That's fear. That's being a scaredy cat. That's not acceptance. That's not having true boundaries and standards for yourself. And being able to stand up for those things. But also being able to bend and flex when you need to. That's acceptance. That's trust. That's love and self. So the people that you see that are practicing it and they think they're dark femininity. They're just scared women. That's all it is. I, I don't hold any stock in those women who are doing that. Because they're just scared. Like, 
they're just scared and they're fearful. And being scared and fearful, it just makes you more controllable. And this also means that you don't get what you want out of life. When you're too scared to uh, to go or push boundaries or you're too scared to speak up, you're too scared to step out of lines. You can't get the desires of your heart. So being in that space and this dark feminine, uh, I am a bad, I hate men, I can't stand men, I use men kind of energy that these women be in, they're just scared women. That's all they are. They're scared women. They have all these walls up so that no one can penetrate those walls. See, a, a woman of work, a woman of her, her power, she understands that I have my standards. I have these, these uh, walls around me. People have to prove themselves to get beyond the wall, but they don't mind opening them up. They don't mind letting people in who are worthy. They have a good hold of identifying who is working, who isn't. I guarantee you the reason why these women you think that are in dark femininity, that they're, they're, they're going to protect themselves from ever being harmed, they will be targeted more than any other woman because they have put in, they have put a, a a sign on their forehead basically come see me come do something to me because hey i'm scared i'm i'm fearful of ever being hurt again all it's gonna take one man that understand that she's scared she's in fear and he's gonna do more to try to break those walls down so you go not too far right, not too far left, not too far bad or good. When you are in acceptance, that I accept who I am. You can't, you can't harm or trigger or get around someone who knows who they are. Like you can if you get someone who only is accepting it in all of the things they consider bad and they're reveling in it. And that's the only thing they accept. That's the only thing they trust in. That's why I'm very wary of these women who are teaching that and they're teaching it to young women because they're just teaching with young women to figure out how to have a bigger shield and having a bigger shield doesn't mean it doesn't teach them how to recognize or understand when the unworthy is near them. It doesn't teach them how to hold on and weld their power. It just teaches them how to shield themselves from harm. And when you, you walk around in, in this world and you walk with a shield and the only thing you're concerned about is harm and you're fearful, you attract more. People are attracted more to getting beyond your shield and they make you make yourself a target. And this is what these women, they're going to make themselves a target. Mark my words. Just because you see them on social media, a lot of them aren't dating anyway. They're just, they're just teaching how to be in this dark family and they give you all, all these rules to live by. All these things to do. All these things you're supposed to do to men. And they give you all these rules. And the thing is, they never taught you what happens when someone looks like the rule, but they aren't. They never taught you how to recognize things on an energetic level. They never taught you the, how to the take and weld your woman's power. That's why I don't even pay any attention to the women who teach dark femininity in that manner. And dark femininity, I'm going to say this, it may trigger, y'all know I don't care, I'm going to say it anyway. Dark femininity should never be taught singular. It should not be a singular topic that you're teaching. Why? Because you are negating all of the, the light feminine um, topics and energy and energies that come with that. The other side, the other side of the coin. So if a woman is just focusing in on dark femininity, I wouldn't trust that page. Because if she's not teaching feminine energy in its entirety, you're only going to get one side of the picture. And getting one side of the picture is just helping you build a shield. And people who build shields live in fear. And people who live in fear become targets. I love women, women rappers and they help empower us as a extend i learned to take what's logical and just vid out to the rest thoughts on women white rappers with their power honestly babe i don't listen to music okay y'all i don't watch television and i don't watch uh i don't listen to music television for me is every once in a while i barely uh watch television i barely listen to music i am a reader through and through okay my entertainment is a book I live in fear and I, that, that breaks my heart because you should live in fear. 
Living in fear just puts a target on you. Y'all do understand that fear is 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 a big. How do I want to put this? Because I don't want to scare nobody. But when it comes to fear, fear is energetic too. Fear is manifestation. You can literally manifest what you fear. So if you walk around in fear, you you can possibly manifest what you fear. So I'm always very concerned about women teaching dark femininity in that matter. What dark, what dark femininity is supposed to be? It's supposed to be you talking about what is not accepted, what you haven't accepted. That is what dark femininity is supposed to be. Like the things you have not accepted about yourself. Maybe you are, like you said, you're in fear. That's something you haven't accepted about yourself. Then you would do the inner work to start accepting yourself so that you can move out of fear. That is, that's what dark feminine is supposed to focus in. It's supposed to be more about the inner work. It's supposed to be about integrating. Integrating the dark and the light and having you step into true femininity. No one is supposed to be just teaching dark feminine energy. And that's the reason why I think it's so lopsided that some women are, like this young lady said before, that this woman has went, her friend has went so far to the bad side that she don't care about anybody. So there's no light in her. Y'all, let me explain something to you. You want healthy masculine energy? You are never going to be able to have that with just a 100% dark feminine. You're literally going to attract what you don't want. Well, let's not say attract. I'm going to say you're going to accept what you don't want. I live in fear. My shield is weak. All that negative is getting through on a force field. I'm so weak. I'm trying to be strong. I'm scared to be happy because when everything goes wrong, when I'm happy. And see, that is a that is a limited belief because everything goes wrong when you're happy, or when you uh, when you say when you're not when you aren't happy or when you are happy. It's based. That's a limited belief you just gave me. And the thing is, you might want to work on mindset. Because what we believe what is what we receive. So if you believe that anytime you're happy, something's going to happen. Or better yet, if every time something good happens to so you, you're waiting for the, the, the shoe to fall, then that is uh, a limited belief. And you have to be the one to actually work on your mindset. If I were you, I would begin the process of inner work and working on my mindset. Because you don't want to attract these things to yourself. And really, it's not necessarily attracting, it's accepting these things. We accept what we believe we should have. If we believe that we should be in a, a horrible, toxic relationship, we will accept that. If we believe that we don't deserve happiness, we will accept that. If we believe that we're not worthy, we will accept that. So it's not about necessarily attracting, it's what we accept. Because see, what we believe, we confirm. Your brain is works this way. Everything that you believe, you will only see what you believe. Even if it's happiness right here, it's right here. You just don't see it. Because our brains will confirm what we believe. If we have a limited belief that we don't, we shouldn't have happiness, your brain will confirm every negative thing that you have around you. So mindset work is definitely what I would suggest for you because you want to get out of that mindset. Because that mindset is going to hold you back. From getting the desires of your heart. If you want something, you have to put one foot in front of the other in order to get it. I'm always preparing for the worst. And see, and the thing is, since you're preparing, your reality will give you the worst. Because your mind is going to confirm and affirm it. And that's what you're going to see. So you want to get rid of these limiting beliefs that you have. You want to work on mindset stuff. If I were you, I would get into inner, inner work. Uh, I have lots of inner work content. I have inner work content on my YouTube page for free. Go over there, click on YouTube, it's in, click the link in my bio, and start inner work. And you will be so much better off in the end. You will start to see your life change just by doing the inner work. That's the start. Of course, I have other things on my page, y'all. I talk about feminine power, self-mastery, relationships. But if you need to start on mindset because you already know what the problem is, Click the link on YouTube and go there. There's free content there. Of course, I have uh, programs directly just toward inner work. You can go to my link in my bio. Start working on that. You want to build you, yourself up. You want to be strong. You want to step in your womanhood. 
You want to be powerful. You have to accept yourself and you have to work on your mindset and your beliefs.